చాప్టర్ ఫిఫ్టీ శ్రీ సాయి సచరిత్ర లాస్ట్ చాప్టర్ ఇంగ్లీష్ స్టోరీస్ ఆఫ్ కాకా సాహెబ్ దీక్షిత్ శ్రీ తెంబి స్వామి బాలరా బలరామ్ కృష్ణ దురంధర్ చాప్టర్ ఫిఫ్టీ ఆఫ్ ది ఒరిజినల్ సచరిత్ర హ్యాస్ బీన్ ఇన్కార్పొరేటెడ్ ఇన్ చాప్టర్ థర్టీ నైన్ యాజ్ ఇట్ డీల్ విత్ ద సేమ్ సబ్జెక్ట్ మ్యాటర్ నౌ చాప్టర్ ఫిఫ్టీ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద సచరిత్ర హ్యాస్ బీన్ ట్రీటెడ్ హియర్ యాజ్ చాప్టర్ ఫిఫ్టీ దిస్ చాప్టర్ గివ్స్ ద స్టోరీస్ ఆఫ్ వన్ కాకా సాహెబ్ దీక్షిత్ టూ శ్రీ టెంబే స్వామి అండ్ త్రీ బలరామ్ దీక్ష దురంధర్ ప్రిలిమినరీ విక్టరీ బి అండ్ టూ సాయి హూ ఈజ్ ద మెయిన్ స్టే ఆఫ్ ద భక్తాస్ హూ ఈజ్ అవర్ సద్గురు హూ ఎక్స్పౌండ్స్ ఈఎక్స్ పిఓయు ఎన్డిఎస్ వివరించారు ద మీనింగ్ ఆఫ్ ద గీత అండ్ హూ గివ్స్ అస్ ఆల్ పవర్స్ ఓహ్ సాయి లుక్ ఫేవరబుల్లీ ఆన్ అస్ అండ్ బ్లెస్ అస్ ఆల్ ద శాండల్వుడ్ ట్రీస్ గ్రో ఆన్ ద మాల్యా మౌంటైన్స్ అండ్ వార్డ్ ఆఫ్ డబ్ల్యూఏఆర్ డిఓఎఫ్ఎఫ్ పారద్రోలే హీట్ ద క్లౌడ్స్ పోర్ దేర్ రెయిన్ వాటర్ అండ్ దేర్ బై కూల్ అండ్ రిఫ్రెష్ ఆల్ ద పీపుల్ ద ఫ్లవర్స్ బ్లాసమ్ ఇన్ ద స్ప్రింగ్ అండ్ ఎనేబుల్ అస్ టు వర్షిప్ గాడ్ దేర్ విత్ సో ద స్టోరీస్ ఆఫ్ సాయిబాబా కంఫర్ట్ ఇన్ ఆర్డర్ టు గివ్ సోలేస్ ఎస్ఓఎల్ఏసిఈ ఓదార్పు అండ్ కంఫర్ట్ టు ద రీడర్స్ ఆర్ లిజనర్స్ both those who tell and those who hear the stories of baba are blessed and holy it is a well established fact that though we, we try hundreds of means or sadhanas we do not attain the spiritual goal of life unless a sadguru blesses us with his grace here the following story in illustration of this statement kaka sahab dikshit 1864 to 1926 mr hari sitaram alias Kaka Sahib Dikshit was born in 1864 in Vadnagara, Nagar, in a Brahmin family at Khandha, Central Province. His primary education was done at Khandra, Hinga, Nagar, and secondary education at Nagpur. He came to Mumbai for a higher education and studied first in the Wilson College and then in the Elphinstone College. college after graduation in 1883 he passed his llb and solicitation examinations and then served in the form of the government solicitors messrs little and co and then after some time started a solicitors firm of his own before 1909 sai baba's name was not familiar to kaka sahab but after that he soon became his great devotee while he was staying at lonawala he happened to see his old friend mr nana sahab chandarkar both spent some time in walking about many things kaka sahab dikshit to him how while he was boarding in a train in london he met with an accident in which his foot slipped and was injured hundreds of remedies gave him no relief nana sahab then told him that if he wished to get rid of the pain and lameness of his leg he should go to his sadguru sai baba he also gave him all the particulars of sai baba and mentioned to him sai baba's dictum d i c t u m samita lokokti i draw to me by my man from far off or even across the seven seas like a sparrow with a string fastened to its feet he also made it clear to him that if he, if he was not baba's man he would not be attracted to him and given darshan kaka sahib dikshit was uh, pleased to hear all this and said to nana sahib that he would go to baba see him and pray to him to cure not so much his lame leg but bring down his lame fickle mind and give him leave eternal bliss sometime after kaka sahib went to ahmednagar and stayed with sri sardar kaka sahib mirkar in connection with securing votes for a seat in the mumbai legislative council mr bala sahib mirikar son of kaka sahib mirikar who was a mamaltadar of copper gaon also came at that time to ahmednagar in connection with a horse exhibition there after the election business was over kaka sahib dikshit wanted to go to shirdi and both the mirikar's father and son were also thinking about a fit and proper person as a guide with whom he should be sent there there sai baba was arranging things for his reception shama got a telegram from his father in law at ahmednagar stating that his wife shama was baba's permission went there and saw his mother in law and found her improving and better nana sahab pants and papa sahab great gadder i happened to see shama on their way to the exhibition and they told him to go to mirika's horse 
सी काका साहेब दीक्षित देर एंड टेक हिम टू शेडी अलॉन्ग विथ हिम काका साहेब दीक्षित एंड द मिरिकस वर आल्सो इन्फॉर्म ऑफ शामा सराइवल इन द इवनिंग शामा केम टू मिरिकस हु इंट्रोड्यूस हिम टू सा काका साहेब दे अरेंज दैट शामा शुड लीव फॉर कॉपर गांव विथ काका साहेब दे अरेंज दैट शामा शुड लीव फॉर कॉपर गांव विथ काका साहेब बाई द टेन ओ क्लॉक नाइट ट्रेन आफ्टर दिस वॉज सेटल्ड ए क्यूरियस थिंग हैपन बाला साहेब मिरिकस थ्रू एसाइड द वे आर covering on baba's big portrait and showed the same to kaka saheb he was surprised to see that he whom he was going to meet at shirdi was already there in the form of his portrait to get greet him at this juncture sthiti a point of time he was much in mood that made his prostration before the portrait the portrait belonged to mega the glass over it was broken and it was sent to mirikas for repairs the necessary repairs had been already made and it was decided to return the portrait with kaka saheb and shama before 10 o'clock they went to the station and book booked their passage but when the train arrived they found that the second class was overcrowded and that there was no room for them fortunately the guard of the train turned out to be acquaintance a c q u a i n t a n c e parichayam of kaka saheb and he put them up in the first class thus they traveled comfortably and alighted at copper gaon their jai knew no bounds when they saw their nana saheb chan chinchinakar who was bound for shirdi kaka saheb and nana saheb embraced each other and there then after bathing my bathing in the sacred godavari river they started for shirdi after coming there and getting baba's darshan kaka saheb's mind was melted his eyes were full of tears and he was overflowing with joy baba said to him that he was also waiting for him and had sent sharma ahead to receive him kaka saheb then passed many happy years in baba's company he built a wada in shirdi which he made as his more or less the permanent home the experiences he got from baba are so many fold that it is not possible to relate them all here the readers listeners are advised to read a special kaka saheb dikshit number of sri sai leela magazine volume 12 number 6 to 9 we close this account with the mention one fact only baba had comforted him by saying that in the end he will take him in air coach or viman that is secure him happy death this came out to truth on the 5th july 1926 he was traveling in the train with hemant pant and talking about sai baba he seemed deeply engrossed in sai baba all of sudden he threw his neck on hemant pant's shoulder and breathed his last with no trace of pain and uneasiness shri tambe swami we come to the next story which shows how saints love each other with fraternal affection once shri was devanand saraswati known as shri tambe swami encamped at rajamahendra andhra country on the banks of the godavari he was devout orthodox dynasty jani and yogi bhakta of the dattatreya one mr pondalekra leader of nanded went to see him with some friends where they were talking with him the names of shirdi and sai baba were casually mentioned here baba name and the swami giant hands and the reverence and taking a coconut gave it to pandalik rao and said to him offer this to my brother sai with my pranam and request him not to forget me but ever love me he also added that swamis do not generally bow to others but in this case an exception had now to be made mr pandalik rao consented consented to take coconut and his message to baba the swami was right in calling baba as a brother for as he mentioned the agnihotra sacred for day and night in his orthodox fashion but to kept his agnihotra duni ever burning in the masjid after one month pandalikra and others left to for shirdi with the coconut and reached manmad and his they felt that thir- tasty they went to eruvel at eruvelet for drinking water as water should not be drunk on any empty stomach they took out some refreshment that is chivda c h i v a d a flattened rice mixed with spice the chivda tasted month uh, most pungent and in order to soften it uh, someone suggested broke the coconut and mixed the its scrapings with it thus they made the chivda most tasty and palatable ruchikaramaina p a l a t a b l e and for 
unfortunately the coconut turned out to be the same that was entrusted to punle crow as they neared the shirdi punle crow remembered the trust that is coconut stand was very soon um, to learn that it was broken and consumed he came to shirdi and saw baba baba had already received the wireless message regarding the coconut from tembi swami and himself asked punle crow first to give the thing sent by his brother he felt fast baba's feet confessed his guilt and negligence repented pachata patadu and asked baba's pardon he offered to give another fruit is as a substitute but baba refused to accept it saying that the worth of that coconut was far more than that of an ordinary one and that it could not be replaced by another baba also added now you need not worry yourself any one more about the matter it was on account of my with that the coconut was entrusted to you and then you ultimately broken on the way why should you take the responsibility of the actions on you do not entertain the sense of the doership in doing good as well as bad deeds you be eternally prideless and egoless in all the things and thus your spiritual progress will be rapid what a beautiful spiritual in- instruction baba gave balram durandar mr balram durandar belong to the um, part hare prabhu community of santa cruz mumbai he was an uh, advocate of the mumbai high court to and sometime principal of the government law school mumbai the whole account of it he then turned his attention to spiritual and religious matters he st- studied gita carefully and its commentary janeswari and other philosophical and uh, metaphysical works he was a devotee of Vinoba of Pandarpur he came in contact with Shed Baba in uh, 1912 6 months earlier his brother Babuji and Vaman Rao came to Shirdi and took Baba's darshan they returned home and mentioned their sweet experiences to Balram and to other members they then they all decided to see Shai Baba before they came to Shirdi Baba declared openly that today many uh, amni of my darbar people are coming uh, the Durandar brothers were astonished to hear this remark of baba from mothers as they had not given any previous intimation of their trip trip all other people prostrated themselves and um, before you baba and sat talking with him baba said to them these are my darbar people whom i have referred before and said to the darandar brothers who have been with each other uh, for the last 60 generations uh, all the brothers were gentle and modest they stood with giant bob hands looking at baba's feet all the satvik emotions such as tears choking etc moved them and they were all happy then they went to um, their lodging took their meals and um, talking a little rest again came back to the masjid balram sat near baba massaging his legs baba who was smoking the chilim advanced it towards him and beckoned him to smoke it balram was not accustomed to smoking still he accepted the pipe smoked it with great difficulty and returned it reverentially this was the most auspicious moment for balram he was suffering from asthma for 6 years the smoke completely cured him on the disease which never troubled him again some 6 years later on a particular day he again got an attack of asthma this was precisely the time when baba took his maha samadhi the day of the visit was a thursday and the durandar brothers had the good fortune of witnessing the chavadi procession that might at the arthi function in the chavadi balram saw the glow of pandranga and baba's face and next morning at the kagada arthi time the same phenomena the same luster of beloved beauty pandranga was visible again in and baba's face mr balram durandar wrote in maha marathi the life of maharashtra saint tukaram but he did not survive to see its publication it was published later on by his brothers in 1928 in a short note on balram's life given on the beginning of the book the above account of balram's visit has been fully corroborated by page 6 of the book bow to sri sai peace be to all srinivaso vijayate